This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I would like to call the Village of Ashwaubenon and Village Board meeting to order for Tuesday, January 25th. Roll call, please. President Kardoski? Here. Trustee Paul? Here. Trustee Kubaki is excused. Trustee Zerbel? Here. Trustee Krieger? Here. Trustee Fluki? Here. And Trustee Service? Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remember all our men and women throughout the world in uniform. Um, I, I would just like to say now, we recently lost a very um, important person that worked for the village. He was on our village board. He was on our county board. So if we could just have a moment of silence, please, for Skeeter Watermullen. Um, thank you. We also lost a longtime standing member of our tree board, uh, Jim Tubbs. So. A lot, of, a lot of losses this last week. Um, I need uh, action on the agenda. I have no changes. Move to approve as presented. Second. second. Motion and a second to approve as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. I need action on the open and closed minutes from the December 14th meeting. Move, Move to, to approve. approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Number six, comments from the public must be limited to items not on the agenda. You must state your name and address. You're limited to five minutes. The board's role is to listen and not discuss the item. Personnel issues cannot be discussed nor individuals named. And the board is not able to take action at this meeting. Is there anybody who would like to speak on something that's not on the agenda? Anybody who'd like to speak on something not on the agenda? Okay, moving on. Written communications or announcements. I have some communications that were sent to me about how great our snowplow guys did on, on one of the storms. This, um, so that was really um, great. And then um, the secretary um, in... Um, Public Works got an email from somebody that was saying how wonderful our Public Works garbage and recycling guys did, and it's always great. I, I forward these things on to the departments that um, get the kudos because we don't always get those. We usually get the complaints when somebody doesn't pick up the garbage or doesn't plow their road, so <clears throat> those, those are really great things. So. Just wanted to say that. Does anybody else have any written communications or announcements? I do have one more announcement. I would like to welcome Kelly Service to our board. She is our newest trustee that was uh, selected at the last at the last village board meeting. So, anyway, welcome Kelly. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, we will move on to number eight. This is also a fun time. Oath for our new officers. So, Chief, I'll let you take it. All right, thank you. Uh, appreciate the board allowing us to do this. Uh, I would like to introduce our newest officers. Uh, they've been with us for a little bit, but because of COVID, we had to delay things. So, first, I would like to introduce Hunter Vandenelsen. Hunter, come on up. No relation <laughs> to Lee, as far as we know. Yeah. <laughs> So Hunter grew up in Ashwaubenon uh, after graduating high school. He attended NWTC where he obtained an associate degree in, as a fire medic. In 2018, Hunter became a paid on call firefighter with the village. Um, he was hired as a fire paramedic with Ashland Fire Department in August of 2020. Uh, while conducting his duties with us, he still remained as a POC. Hunter was hired as a public safety officer uh, by us on uh, April 26th of 21. Uh, he attended the Law Enforcement Academy at NWTC and graduated on November 10th of this year. So we would like to welcome Hunter. Um, looking forward to many years with you, sir. All right. Next is Robert Deutsch. Rob, come on up.
Uh, before Rob became certifiable law enforcement officer in Wisconsin, he was also a correctional officer with Racine Correctional Institute. He was also a dispatcher for the Brown Deer Police Department. That's down by Milwaukee, right? Yep. Uh, in 2019, Rob began his uh, uh, full-time law enforcement position with the Oneida Police Department. His first day with us was November 29th of 2021. Um, he's currently in the FTO program as his hunter. So again, Rob, welcome. Appreciate it. What I'd like to do to make things a little easier is I'm gonna give you both a microphone. <laughs> with this in, use this with your left one because you gotta raise the right one. Nobody's listening though, so. All right. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Are you ready? Raise your right hand. I, say your name. Uh, I, Hunter Ryan Nelson. Nelson. Do solemnly swear. Do, do solemnly swear. swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, support and defend, defend the Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. To the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. That I take this obligation freely and without purpose of evasion. That I take this obligation freely and without purpose of evasion. And I will well. And I will well. And faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Public Safety Officer. Of the Office of Public Safety Officer. For the Village of Eshwabanon. For the Village of Eshwabanon. Acting to the best of my ability. Acting to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yep, come on up. We'll see you can do it first. Go. <laughs> Don't worry if you poke them. <laughs> Good job, Dad. Congratulations. Congratulations and welcome. Okay, here's another fun thing we get to do. Number nine, the 2021 Community Excellence Award. That is our business partner um, community award for excellence in the village. So Rex, you and I, come on up, Don. So every year the village staff get together, kind of put our heads together and, and, and talk about uh, the businesses and individuals and organizations within the community that have really gone above and beyond um, what their community responsibility is. And what I mean by that is things that makes the community vibrant, uh, things that help out the community um, in, 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 in many different facets. Um, after discussion this year, uh, the Cornerstone Community Center was the the runaway winner, really. And Don Shilson um, has managed that since uh, 2000. So we certainly wanted to invite Don here to take the um, take the award. And uh, we've got a proclamation, Don, that we'd like to read to you, if that's all right, this evening. Whereas the Cornerstone Community Center has been serving the youth and adults of Brown County for skating endeavors and ice tournaments since 2000. And whereas 
The Cornerstone Community Center has been managed by Mr. Don Chilson for that full stretch of time since opening its doors. And whereas the Cornerstone Community Center has been a good neighbor and working with the Village of Eshwabadon at the Eshwabadon Sports Complex to present a professional and attractive facility for all users, reflecting a positive light on the village. And whereas during the COVID pandemic of 2021, the Cornerstone Community Center staff went above and beyond the call of duty to attract both men's and women's hockey tournaments and skating events to Ashwaubenon. And whereas these tournaments included the United States Hockey League Combines, the Super Series AAA Elite Hockey Tournament, USA Hockey National Championships, and the CCM World Invite, to name but a few. And whereas the Cornerstone Community Center took necessary precautions to run safe and efficient tournaments following local COVID protocol, and whereas these tournaments and events put heads in beds, people in the restaurants, and shoppers in the stores to greatly assist a local economy and financially benefit Ashwaubenon businesses. <clears throat> Therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Ashwaubenon wishes to honor the Cornerstone Community Center by awarding them the 2021 Community Excellence Award for their dedicated service to the Ashwaubenon community in the greater Brown County area. Don? Maybe if the two of you can get together just for a couple of photo shots. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say, Don, you know, COVID was really tough on everybody. And what you did at the Cornerstone was above and beyond for, like Rex said, to, to have entertainment around this area, to put heads in beds, to help our local economy. And I, and I don't know. I don't know how much you know it meant to, to the village to do that. So I thank you so very, very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, number 10, action on consent agenda. We have the action on operator's license, action on the annual renewal of a conditional use home occupation located at 1161 Blue Ridge, action on annual renewal of a conditional use home occupation license located at 2090 Marley Lane, our investment report, budgeted expenditures and department reports. If anybody would like anything pulled from that consent, consent agenda, that would be fine, otherwise I need a motion to approve it. Can we just pull E, I just have one quick question on the budgeted expenditures. Okay, so could we have a motion to approve everything except the budgeted expenditures? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve everything except E, budgeted expenditures. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Okay, your question, Tracy, on budgeted expenditures. Um, just a question on page two, uh, payment of about 25000 to the United Nation. I was wondering what that was for. You're welcome. It's drawing a blank. I'll have to look it up. Okay. And I don't have it right in front of me. It's what the invoice is. I'll, I can pull it up though and get to you, get back to you. Okay, we could. That's fine. And yeah. we can just continue on, Mary, and then get it. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, do you want to approve it, and then he'll answer us? Sure. That's fine. If everyone's okay with that. Okay. I need a motion to approve then. Motion to approve the budgeted expenditures. I'll second it. Motion and a second to approve E, budgeted expenditures. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Number 11, public hearings. Public hearing on ordinance 01-1-22 regarding revisions to chapter 20 subdivision. Aaron. The uh, requested public hearing for the ordinance amendment uh, is result of discussion held at uh, village board 
uh, last year uh, regarding providing direction within the subdivision code on the uh, direction on pedestrian accommodations within subdivision plans. Uh, the ordinance in front of you uh, does go through and make some amendments regarding pedestrian accommodations. Uh, in short, what it does is it does require uh, pedestrian accommodations as defined uh, in the ordinance uh, on new subdivision plats, that'd be preliminary plats uh, moving forward. Uh, the intent of that is to provide better direction to staff as well as developers on the front end of the project uh, as far as what types of pedestrian accommodations are required. And then from that point, giving the village board the flexibility to make any adjustments uh, uh, moving forward. Okay, is there anybody here who would like to speak for or against? This ordinance. Is there anybody here who would like to speak for or against this ordinance? One more time. Is there anybody here who would like to speak for or against this ordinance? Hearing none, I need a motion to close the hearing, please. Close the hearing. Second. Motion and a second to close the hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Number 12, action items, action on ordinance 01-1-22 regarding revisions to chapter 20 subdivision. Any comments, questions from the board? Now, the only question I wanna make, uh, it's for the help of Aaron so that when the, or the uh, developers come in front of him that it's clearly stated. Uh, but I do want to make sure the board gets a crack at that before any decisions are made. That is correct. So uh, before any preliminary plat uh, is approved, it does have to come to the village board for final approval, uh, as well as at that point, you can certainly have a discussion on either required uh, uh, amenities or utilities, so on and so forth, uh, moving forward. Okay, okay. any other questions? No. Um, I would just like to thank Aaron for your hard work on this. I know it's um, a tough job to get the ordinance in place and it's in a lot of different sections of the ordinance. So um, I appreciate you putting it together and um, think it's it'll be a nice um, addition that we will have in our community as new developments come in um, to allow us to look at pedestrian access um, from the start and the board to be cognizant of it and make some decisions on how we can allow people to move through our community by foot easier. So I appreciate your hard work on it. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Okay, I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Motion and a second to approve ordinance number 01-1-22 regarding revisions to chapter 20 subdivision. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. 12B, action on Class A beer, Class A liquor license request for Hy-V, Inc., DBA, Hy-V. Mary, I'm gonna um, recuse myself from any discussion or voting on this matter. Okay, thank you. Okay, Chris. Hy-V requests a Class A beer, Class oh. A juice. Class A beer, Class A liquor license for the entire store, excluding the bar, food hall, and patio, which has a Class B beer and Class B liquor license. The Wine and Spirits Department will have an exterior entrance at 2401 Oneida Street. The 90-day statement of intent should be suspended, as was done for the Class B beer, Class B liquor license. And all licensing and payment requirements have been met, and the Public Works and Protection Committee approved this unanimously. And Tyler is here if you have any questions. Okay, any questions for anybody? So okay. just to clarify, the Class A beer and liquor license is just for takeout, correct? For sales within and for people to take and leave with it. Is that correct? Right, Class A is away. And then B is the one that's for sales on site that they can drink there. And we approved that one before. So this is strictly for sales that people can leave with the product. Correct. Okay, correct. thank you. Being on the Public Works and Protection Committee, uh, we had no problem with that. Uh, everything was defined quite clearly. Uh, I'll uh, make a motion to approve as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the Class A beer slash Class A liquor license for Hy-Vee. 
Any more discussion or questions? What, oh, excuse me. Did you want to add to that motion and second about suspending the 90 day? Yes. Okay, so and also add uh, suspending the 90 day statement of intent. Okay, any other questions? Um, I just have a question for Tyler. Did you need clarification on how that was going to get closed off? Remember we had discussed that at the public works? Could you um, state your name and address for the record, please? You no, know, you Tyler. said you were going to go back and get more info on it, so I thought it would be a great time to bring it out. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tyler Power on behalf of Hy-Vee, 113 31st Avenue in Moline. Yes, I did go back and check on that. The final design is not sure. I don't know if it's going to be a chain or, you know, how that's going to look. You know, it could be, you know, like a glass door that slides. There, There's a few different designs that we've used in past stores, but there is going to be that partition there um, in the wall. So what that is right now, we haven't exactly, you know, figured out exactly what that's going to be, but there is going to be something there. It will be secured. Is the Absolutely. Bottom yep. Line. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions for Tyler? I just have one question. Um, when we approve the class B, we also waive the 90 day mm -hmm. and we're going to waive it on this, which I understand. But I remember we talked about with class B a little bit, having a timeline out further, just in case they don't, so we're not holding that license. Would we want to do the same thing with this? And do you remember what we did with the class B, Joel? So this particular, both licenses are valid through, and, and Chris can correct me if I'm wrong, through June 30th of 2022. A new licensing period would be July 1. So a high V, although they will not be opening and operating their store before the end of this licensing period, needed to have some assurances that the licenses would be available to them so that they could proceed with their due diligence and, and demolition preparation work. Um, now that they have the, the license granted, it'll be valid until that expiration period at which point they will need to reapply and get that license renewed. Now they would be entitled to that renewal based on these conditions. And from that point, they would we would do another suspension of 90 days and we could certainly create a condition based on their known opening date at that point. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the Class A beer, Class A liquor for Hy-Vee with the 90-day suspension of the in suspension of the 90-day intent. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And we have one abstain. So, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> 12B or 12C action regarding ordinance 011-3-21 rezoning parcels VA-228-20-7 VA-228-20-5 and VA-228-20-6 2300 block of South Ridge Road from B2 general business to R2 two family residence. Aaron. Okay. Uh going to bring it up on screen here for you uh, to depict the uh, area of rezoning. Uh, the requested rezoning uh, is at the intersection of Bel Air Court and South Ridge Road as indicated on the map uh, to take the, rezone, the zoning uh, from its current B2 general business classification to R2 two family residence. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, it should be noted that the, uh, the that there was a public hearing that was held. Uh, I want to say that was, that was December, no. I believe it was. Uh, on this item, the applicant at that time requested a delay on action while uh, he evaluated some alternative developer proposals. Uh, those uh, alternatives that, that eventually kind of fell through, and he went back to the proposed, as he had initially provided, of the uh, rezoning to the R2 uh, zoning classification, which would allow for the construction of three duplexes uh, on the three parcels uh, of land. So a total of three uh, total duplexes. At the public hearing, it was noted that there was a concern by a homeowner uh, on Hawk Street regarding stormwater management. Uh, it should be noted that the applicant is aware uh, of stormwater management requirements and will be including uh, stormwater management uh, methodology within the development. 
The surrounding uses, uh, as you can see on the map, uh, include R1, single family residence along Hawk Street. Uh, we have R3 zoning, which is a multifamily zoning district uh, to the south along South Ridge Road. And then we also have B2, again, general business along Bell Air Court, and then also B2 zoning uh, on the opposite side of South Ridge Road. The proposed rezoning to R2 uh, is uh, consistent with our comprehensive plan uh, in providing for a transition of uses from the B2 to the residential uh, districts. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the requested rezoning, I certainly can answer them. Uh, otherwise, the applicant, Mr. Uh, Michael Miskella, is available online as well. Oh, I should note Plan Commission did recommend uh, approval of this at their meeting. I don't have any any questions. Um, I, I just I'm glad that you said that they're working with the stormwater because that was that was a concern from the residents behind that. Um, they didn't have any excess stormwater runoff, so glad to know that he's working on that. Anybody have any questions? Well, the stormwater was in addition from the first time it went through here, so uh, it uh, shouldn't be any problem. Uh, no other questions. I'll move to approve uh, these three parcels from uh, general business to R2 to family. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 011-3-21. I've just got a uh, question. The, the families that live behind there are worried about stormwater management um, because moving this to, uh, um, to two family residents. If we kept it at, had kept it at general business, would they have had that same concern? Yeah. Yes, right. Any kind of development on the property uh, would generate additional stormwater and would need right. to be managed. But right, whether it's B2 or R2, uh, that would create uh, the need for stormwater management. So they had to know that eventually that was going to be built on and, and the village was aware that that was going to be something we had to handle anyway. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 12D, review an action regarding a resolution of the Village Board of the Village of Ashwabnan accepting the partial completion of public improvements of Highland Ridge Estates, Phase 1. Doug Martin. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, before you tonight, uh, the next two agenda items actually uh, tie into one another. Uh, the, the first one here uh, is with respect, uh, first phase of Highland Ridge Estates uh, started construction this summer. Uh, the utilities, the curb and gutter, uh, the stormwater pond, uh, the first layer of asphalt uh, was completed this summer. Uh, uh, I should say this, this fall before uh, winter set in. Uh, there's a couple items left to be completed in the spring, uh, the trail, uh, going through a portion of the subdivision and the crosswalk at Sand Acres have yet to be finished. So uh, to this point, uh, all of the as-built drawings, all of the inspection records, the televising reports, pressure tests, everything came back fine. Uh, the developer requested a, a partial acceptance of the phase one utilities uh, so that the escrow letter, letter, uh, letter of credit, if you will, uh, can be reduced down to cover uh, from covering the original cost of the project down to the remaining cost of the project, uh, those items I just stated, plus the warranty work. Uh, with that, staff has reviewed everything and, and all is in order. Okay. Any questions or comments? <coughs> okay, I'll accept a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. A second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution R1-1-22. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 12E, review an action regarding addendum number one to development agreement for land division improvements, Highland Ridge Estates. Doug. So, like we just discussed, the, the partial acceptance of the utilities would allow an, uh, an amendment to the developer's agreement, thereby lowering the amount from the original project cost down to the new project cost, what's left to be completed in warranty work. 
So it takes it from uh, 2.4 million down to 400,000. Move to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the addendum number one to development agreement for land division improvements, Highland Bridge Estates. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. 12F, request to approve bike and ped comprehensive plan additions. Now, before we start this, I did have a conversation with Tracy before this, um, this meeting. Um, so this is not to put anything new that's on the south side of Wabi. It's just to change the verbiage from an actual business name to an address and put the side, add sidewalks on both sides of Allied from Wabi to Parkview, correct? Correct. I can kind of walk you through this real quick. Okay. I'll try and make it quick. Because it is, <clears throat> it is a little confusing. There's a lot of if, ands, ors going on here. So the first bullet point, um, we, with, with the Bellin project going in, obviously the Bike and Pet Committee, uh, as they do with all projects, takes a look at uh, each individual um, project that's happening in the village and whether or not there's any concerns with bike and pet improvements. Uh, with the Bellin facility looking at adding, when complete, over 300 employees, uh, not to mention the, the people that are gonna be staying in some of the local hotels within walking distance uh, for their surgery and, and family members that are, will be with them. Uh, it was certainly appropriate to take a look at uh, the sidewalks and bike and pet accommodations. Some of them were already in the plan, um, others were not. Um, the bike and pet kind of kicked around a little bit what's appropriate, what's not uh, for that particular area. What, uh, what will Bellin do to that area in terms of uh, increasing traffic, uh, in, 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 quite honestly increasing business. Um, because once Bellin goes in, I have a feeling you'll see some of the other things start to develop around there as well. At least that's, I'm kind of paraphrasing from the bike and pet committee here. So what, what they came up with, uh, which we would like to put in the plan, uh, first bullet point is to add a sidewalk on the east side of Allied Street, east side of Allied from Parkview Road to um, 2929 Allied, which is a Schwabenon Bowling Alley. Uh, this would also accommodate people staying at the Country Inn and Suites, which is the closest hotel to the new facility. The second bullet point would be to add sidewalk on the west side of Allied from Wabi to Parkview. Um, and I, I believe that is... No, that's not in the plan. This is a new one. So adding, so this is new to the plan, adding from Wabi to Parkview, um, only because we would anticipate in the future uh, additional business going in across the street on, on that stretch. So a sidewalk would probably good to be in the plan. Um, and remember, just because it's in the plan, there's a lot of items in the plan that, that are, are, are 10, 15 years out. So this is nothing that, that, that has to be done immediately. It just is in the plan as, as, a, as a tool um, as things start to develop. Third bullet point, sidewalk on the south side of Wabi from Ridge Road to I-41. So this would basically, uh, uh, from Bellin, uh, this would go west to Ridge Road. It would basically be a connector to the, the Wabi Trail. And the reason for that is the committee really feels that with the employee numbers that are going to be there, um, obviously with any business or, or work situation, you know, with, with the stress, employees want to get out and walk, get a breath of fresh air. This would be a, a great connector to the Wabi Trail um, going on the south side of Ridge Road. And then we'd have to work with the county on that because Wabi is a county highway. Um, so if that went in at some point in the future or, or was talked about going in, it would come here to the village board and then, then we'd have to work with Brown County on, on putting that in, get their permission for what they would allow. The fourth bullet point is sidewalk on the southeast side of Oneida Street from I-41 to 2851 South Oneida, which is Parker Johns. This is already in the plan. Um, actually, the whole south southeast side of Oneida Street is in the plan already. This is nothing new. Right now it says in the plan that it should go to, it's divided up into two for some reason, uh, to go to 
the first part of it would be to go from 41 to Vans Honda and then from Vans Honda to Hanson. And so we wanted to change that. It didn't really make sense to go down as far as, as it said in the current plant to Vans Honda. If this were to go in, it would be from 41 to Parker Johns because it's kind of the restaurant row type of thing. It would allow people to get out and go to a particular restaurant to eat or have lunch or dinner while, while someone may be having surgery. Um, that particular project, quite honestly, um, we had a good conversation with the DOT about it. It would not be cheap. Um, Highway 41 uh, was designed uh, during the, the major reconstruction project not to have sidewalks on that side of the street. The village did not think, you know, while Menards was there, that there would be the need to do that. Things changed. Menards went away. Now you've got Bellin that has, you know, hundreds of people there, and, and, and they're probably going to be walking a little bit around. Um, so we contacted the DOT, and, and it, it is doable, but it's, it would be a challenge. Personally, I, I think it should be in the plan. And, and again, the stretch is in the plan, but I want to let everybody know cost-wise, it's going to be a challenge. It, it would not be able to be done without some major grant funding, probably a, um, a, a DOT multimodal grant. Um, those are due this year. They're probably, those are due basically about every three or four years, I believe. So this wouldn't be done in, in any time in the near future, but it really, it should be in the plan just with the proximity to, to Bellin and the, the people that are probably gonna be walking there. Um, and then and then since we're changing it from Vans Honda back to Parker Johns, then that remaining stretch would be from Parker Johns to Hanson. And that's what the fifth bullet point is. So those are the Bellin projects. There's one more point uh, before I'll take any questions on, on these individual items. Um, and that was up on Hanson Road uh it, this is in the TIF plan as well they're looking at we're looking at a sidewalk consideration uh by the village board at some point in the future i think we're i think we're up for discussion on it in 2024 um so it would be on hansen road from oneida street westward to currently it's in the plan to um the foxcroft creekwood apartments uh, is what is currently in the plan for. And there's already sidewalk on the south side of uh, of Hanson on the bridge. So it would basically be the, the non-bridge stretches there. Um, the change in this, as we were looking at it a little bit closer, is really a couple hundred yards, if that, probably less than that, to the west is Ravenswood uh, Condos. It's a condo condominium complex. That's kind of right across the street from Prevea. And the thought was just to extend that, um, that extra short distance, that extra 200 yards, so that the folks in that condo complex would also be able to get out and, and, and go on the sidewalk you know, to the east. People from Ravenswood, Foxcroft, and Creekwood, if I'm getting, getting all the names straight, they are already walking down on a regular basis. Uh, there's literally a, literally a skunk trail in the grass, a dirt trail. You, they, they walk it, people walk it every day. You see people walking back and forth with bags of groceries from Fresh Time and Quick Trip. Um, so it, it, it's, um, it's an amenity, I think, for that area that would be well used and, and, and probably is needed. There is a sidewalk across the street not being used. People would rather, you know, they're going to take the most direct route, and that is on the south side of the street, whether there's a sidewalk on, on the north side of the street or not. Um, which is actually a, a to school route, if I'm remembering correctly. So those are, sorry, long explanation. Those are the bullet points um, that we're here to to ask uh, to be able to put into the official comprehensive plan. Again, no timeline for any of these. Each individual project would have to come before the village board for any kind of discussion and approval before it's done. And at this point, I guess I'll ask if anyone has any questions on it. Um, I, I know that to put these things in the plan, if there's ever going to be a, any uh, uh, application for grant funding, you have to have them in the plan. <clears throat> so that's why you have to have them in the plan, even though some of them really are a struggle 
to to get to get done, especially that that south one on um, yeah. on the, 41 there. I mean, it's yeah. it's a major. Yep, you're, you're, you're crossing a, a interstate off ramp. You've yep. got utility issues. You've got buried utility issues, yep. and you've got right of way issues. Very slim yep. right of way areas. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it will be a struggle. It will be a challenge. Um, but I know that you know we have to have it in the plan. Yep. That's why I asked if it was in the plan with any dates because I I don't think that that's yeah. that's fair to. No, Anybody no dates. dates. It's just yeah. just listed as is is desired. Correct. Pathway, it, trail, sidewalk area. Should the opportunities arise. Yeah. Rex, this is just a wish list from the bike and pad, and it will be driven through development, and then come to the village board for each project. Am I hearing you right? Correct. It, you know, it, it, it's kind of like if, if you had a clean slate and you were to redo things in Ashwaubenon all over again, starting from scratch, that's something that would probably be asked to be put in or definitely should be considered with that with that giant development. Anything, Gary, that's in that plan um, comes to the village board. Nothing is automatically included. Um, anything comes to the village board for approval, you know, discussion and then approval or denial based on what the village board wishes at that time. Okay, couple, very good. A couple of years ago, we added um, some sidewalks uh, in the uh, in the <clears throat> Title Town area, and I think I got a call from every resident that it would have affected, and they didn't want them. And I said, it's just in the plan. That yep. doesn't mean it's going in. So anyway. And I would, if I could, I would just add that, you know, look at it as it's a planned improvement. The timing of that plan, however, for implementation is what's really kind of debatable. And whether or not we can actually complete the project with the constraints that may be present, whether that's DOT issues, right of way issues, or cooperate, cooperation issues with the county with this particular area because we're dealing with county trunk highway. But it is a plan. So, if that road were ever to be reconstructed into the future, it should be, if it's in the plan, that gives direction to staff as we begin the process of designing the improvement that that infrastructure should be included. Or if a development comes forward and says, we're gonna develop this or redevelop this location, is there anything in our plans that would tell us that other improvements need to be implemented? And we would look in that plan and say, yes, our bike and ped plan says sidewalk should be included here. And so it would become a recommendation. And in some circumstances, maybe a requirement, depending on how the ordinances are read. So I, I, I don't want to diminish it by saying it's a wish list. It's a plan, and it gives direction to staff for the future if something happens, whether it's a reconstruction or, or a redevelopment, that that infrastructure is then going to be proposed now with that, there will be a list of pros and cons to that, that implementation. So you have a full understanding of what the challenges will be to implement that plan, right? Whether it's right away constraints, cost constraints, or permitted, permitted um, constraints from the various parties involved, whether that's the state or the DOT. So it, it is a plan, it does give direction to staff when certain checkpoints are hit or a strong desire or priority is made by the village board. Because it could be in four or five years that you say, boy, we really have a significant pedestrian problem on South Oneida Street as a result of all the redevelopment that's happened there. We need to reprioritize that project and move it up. Uh, and then that gives us, okay, we have direction. We know where we're going because the plan has been put into place and, and, and now we need to implement it. You know, and Joel, that's a really key point of it. Um, you know, when the village is working with developers, when Aaron's meeting with them, to have a plan that he can look at and goes, okay, now I'm working with so-and-so developer, and it says right in our plan here, we want sidewalks on this development. We can work with that developer as long as our ordinances are in place to allow us to do that. And the developer can pay for the installation of those sidewalks rather than the village in the future having to pay for the development of those sidewalks. So. It's a way not only for planning and good solid planning, but to look at these developments and all this commercial and business development that's coming in that wants to come into our community and saying, okay, it's great you're coming, but this is part of 
what the development is going to entail er, incur. So it's a way to shift some costs, maybe from the village to our developers coming in as well. Okay. Is there any action needed on this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or is it just information right now? No. no. Yeah, this, this will be, uh, I can answer it. This will be a formal uh, change to the bicycle and pedestrian plan to accept the amendments that are identified in the staff report. I make a motion to approve the amendments as listed um, to put into our bicycle and pedestrian plan. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the bike and ped comprehensive plan additions. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 12G, consider discuss an ordinance amending section 2-1-46, regular meetings amending section 2-1-47, special meetings and creating section 2-1-60, remote electronic or virtual meetings. Joel. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, this draft ordinance is being prepared for discussion only tonight. It is not being proposed for formal adoption. Uh, pending direction from the board this evening, we'll prepare a final draft, which will be presented at the February meeting post a public hearing uh, in accordance to rules established by the village. Uh, the particular draft ordinance is a combination of a few things. Um, the first two items are really just more or less amendments, cleaning up existing language. Um, one of those is re related to our current regular meeting schedule and times. Uh, previously, the village was the village board was meeting twice per month. Uh, it has since gone to a once per month meeting schedule, and then the times have changed as well. And I would note, although Trustee Kabaki is not here with us this evening, he did mention that he wanted to have a discussion related to the start times that are identified by the ordinance, which I'll discuss in a moment. The other one is more or less just to reflect our organization chart by eliminating kind of the reference to the clerk treasurer to the regular clerk position, uh, which was changed a couple years ago, along with um, uh, eliminating kind of that direct service of papers to the trustee's house. Uh, when this ordinance was crafted, email probably didn't exist. So we thought an electronic communication tool would be more than appropriate. And then finally, the, the, the latter section, the 2-1-60, the is a, uh, a new creation that will allow for remote attendance uh, more formally by our village board members, as well as any boards, commissions, or committees. We've effectively been operating in that premise under kind of more of an emergency order as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and then you also received an attachment to this item from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities with recommendations to create an ordinance that more formally establishes that rule for remote or virtual participation. Uh, and although state law doesn't currently directly address this issue, it was recommended by the League's Corp Council that uh, communities should draft an ordinance if they are to allow for that virtual or remote attendance. Um, obviously, we're still utilizing the capabilities of GoToMeeting with, our, uh, with all our meetings, and it seems to be very well received, and I don't think that that's probably gonna go away, even though COVID may at some point. Um, so I think it would be appropriate to address that issue here. Now, I did model our draft ordinate, ordinance related to remote and virtual meetings to the uh, ordinance that was referenced by the league, and that was the village of Bayside down in Milwaukee County. The one exception to that is Bayside did have an exclusion um, for remote attendance for trustees, where it would have to be for uh, purposes of uh, health, uh, issues with daycare or child care, work related purposes. And because of that, maybe somebody's traveling for work and they can't attend a meeting. So they would be allowed to attend remotely. However, it did exclude individuals who are traveling for leisure, vacation, or for temporary residence to like Florida per se. Now I know there are a few trustees that do leave from time to time and may miss a month uh, of meetings because of that type of travel. So that was excluded. However, it can be reattached to the ordinance based on Bayside's model, but that would be your prerogative. 
Uh, so with that, uh, I will ask, answer any questions that you have. If you have uh, any additions or direction for staff to revise the draft, I will welcome those. And then finally, uh, to touch on Steve's uh, question about the start time for our meetings, he was just asking if the board would consider moving the meetings up by 30 minutes to a start time of 6 p.m. So with that, I'll answer any questions or take direction. So Joel, we've had we've had a couple conversations about this. Many years ago, um, the board did not allow any virtual meetings at all. But with COVID, everybody found out that you can have virtual meetings and they work. And uh, my only concern, and I voice this to you, is that I personally do not feel that any closed session items should be allowed to have virtual attendance. Um, I, I do, you don't have the control, you know, closed session is there for a reason. It's to have those items be discussed in private and I, there's no control when you have somebody that's, you know, tra say traveling for business and you don't really know where they are and you don't know who is with them and I don't feel that that should be allowed. That is my comments. And we do have, provisions within the ordinance that would give that, that discretion to the village president for uh, remote attendance for two different types of items, one being a closed session, the other being a quasi-judicial type hearing. So if you have, um, let's say, an appeal on an alcohol license or uh, a revocation hearing or uh, we had that vicious animal hearing, that would be considered a quasi-judicial type hearing and you really kind of need to be present to hear, see, maybe touch evidence that would be presented and it would be uh, in many cases um, maybe difficult to do that remotely. However, we do have the ability to consult with the corporate counsel to base base the decision on the information or the, the type of hearing or it's quasi judicial but what is being presented, there may be opportunities or in the closed session, depending on what would be provided in closed session. There again, ultimately, the village pres president would have full discretion as to whether to allow or grant that participation remotely in either closed session or a quasi-judicial hearing. Okay. Uh, having worked remotely since 2001, uh, I think that this is definitely needed. Uh, I do agree with what Mary's saying, though, for the closed items, because even though um, you can do it, you just don't have control of the person on the other end. As much as all the trustees would, would try to do the best they could, um, it would be a challenge due to closed session. So I do agree with you, Mary, on that, on that point. Um, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be um, opened up that if somebody is um, going to Florida for winter months or something, um, that they should be able to still call into the meeting and still do the meeting. I think that that's, there's no reason not to, in my opinion, uh, again, with the exception of closed session items. So I, I think it's definitely necessary. I think it's just a, an evolutionary step of meetings both within a business environment and uh, uh, you, you still see, you can drive by a lot of businesses now and there aren't a lot of cars in the parking lot. You know all those meetings are still going on. Lots of meetings are still going on. They're doing them all virtually. And um, if they can do it in a business environment, we can definitely do it here in the, in the, uh, in the public environment, I believe as well. You know, I think having the um, remote access is great and I think it really helps with the public because I think we probably have a lot more people watching and paying attention because of that. Um, the one concern I would have with remote is, let's say one of the board members decides they're gonna move to Florida for the whole winter months and they're gone from December until April and they're remoting in for five, six months or whatever that equates to. I just think that you miss a lot when you're gone that long and you know and maybe to have some kind of limit on that like you can't miss you know so many in a row months in a row um, 
because being here, you get a lot more out of a meeting than sitting somewhere else and participating. So, you know, something like that to curtail that long term, I'm going to Florida, I'll see you when, when snow's done type thing. So that's the one concern I would have uh, about that. Um, and I also kind of like Bayside's verbiage about, you know, solely for convenience due to a vacation travel or seasonal relocation. I guess that takes that into my comments about, you know, moving to Florida for the winter. Um, to have that in or, adjust, you know, have that in in some manner to kind of control a little bit with the absence. Well, uh, many years ago, when we discussed this many years ago and, and the board decided that we would not do remote, remote call-in, um, we did discuss how many how many meetings could a trustee miss? Um, and, and well, at that time it was none because they wouldn't allow it. But um, I agree, I, I think there should be a limit that you shouldn't be able to go from you know December to May, so. Yeah. Any I other personally questions? think when a person takes on this role as being some type of an elected position, he knows he can't be gone that long. It's that okay. simple. Uh, you know, remote works, I've done it for a meeting or two that uh, when I was gone. Uh, as far as the closed sessions, I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I had uh, conversations here with staff and I agree. You're never alone. You don't know when somebody's going to sneak up on you or whatever else. So closed session is not a big deal for me. But I do believe when there's a discussion, I'll use the dog situation again. We should be involved in something like that. Because it could be in your your jurisdiction too. Right. You you may have a lot of input into that. Yeah. Yep. So the the one question that I would have just for further direction to to us is under the current ordinance, we do put a lot of discretion into to, towards the village president as it relates to whether we're going to permit remote attendance or not. Um, and that that's primarily done by design to take into account some of those issues that you may uh, may have already addressed as far as taking seasonal relocation and being gone for three months. The village president, whomever that may be now or in the future as this ordinance stands, would have that discretion to say one month is too much, three months is too much, six months is too much, um, and they would have that discretion. If we start adding in very very detailed specifics into the ordinance that eliminate some of that discretion, and it can create some unintended consequences at times. So that, that would be my only concern is that the more specifics you add to it, the more chances there are to create unintended consequences that could then impact your ability to operate and form a quorum under these guidelines. As an example, let's say one of you is gone next month because of business travel. Village President Mary says, yep, that's okay. We'll allow for that. And then the next month, you're gone on vacation. That was planned. Say, okay, that's good. And you're, Mary's probably thinking, okay, two months, we can, we can make that work, right? And she's all right with it. But then in the third month, there's another business conflict, and now you're out again. And... You know, if it's written into the code at that point and it's hard and fast, then there is no exclusion to it and you don't count towards the, the quorum. However, if there is discretion, you can base it solely on the circumstances that are being presented. Maybe somebody's spouse or father or mother had passed away right before the meeting and that's why you have to miss and you have to travel out of state for that funeral or, or something to that effect. So. Just kind of bear in mind, the more you put as far as specifics and, and strict guidance, the, the less flexibility you have in discretion to administer the ordinance then. I like the idea that the uh, that Mary would be deciding if it's appropriate or not. <clears throat> and not actually put the hard, fast rule in. Just because you lose off, I agree with you, Joel, you lose off flexibility then. Well, and technically, you could get elected for this position and never show up, right? And no one could do anything about it unless, you be unless your residents decided to recall you. Is that correct? 
No, the village board at that point could Good take section. formal action to, so villages are a little different, like town governments, it's different. There would need to be somewhat of a, a recall, if you will, through the court process, but in village and city government, uh, villages in particular, the board could theoretically remove them for, I don't know what the official terminology section. would be, but within the statutes, there's a provision that allows the village board to remove somebody for dereliction of duty or something to that effect. Adam, you had... Yeah, you're correct. You have to show um, that there was some sort of substantial cause um, and not showing up ever doing any of the work would fall under that category. Okay. Okay. <laughs> any, and do you need any other questions answered for direction on where to go to... Talking about the time, I don't have a problem with the six o'clock time. Does anybody, we used to start at seven, then we changed it to 6.30 and I don't have a problem moving to six. Does I'd say 5.30 would be good too. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only question I would have is, there are people that work till at five o'clock, 5.30, because I oh, did no, talk no. to Steve so, on it. That's the only thing. Don't it, take my 5.30 serious, Jerry. <laughs> I know. Well, and, and to, I think for us, it probably wouldn't be that big a deal, but I'm thinking also of people having to come to the meeting that 6.30, everybody gets to get home from work, get there, and then get here instead of having to maybe skip that home time and get here. That would be the only thing that I could think of that might uh, you know, that if you push it closer into that dinner hour, you're getting people coming right from work if they're coming from there. I don't think it probably affects many of us on the on board here where you could probably work with it, but I'm thinking more of as people from the public are coming. Yeah, makes sense. You know, I understand what you're saying, Jay, but you know, we all make uh, adjustments for time when we have to be someplace. This is once a month one time true yeah i don't think it makes a difference true we're all, we'll adjust to that yep true don't disagree with you gary <laughs> yeah I, I don't have a problem moving into six i you know we we don't get a lot of people that um come to the meetings you know we now are getting more that are attending remote but we don't we don't have a lot of people that come to our meetings anyway unless they've got a specific a specific item that they need to talk on. So okay. Any more direction? You want more direction? No? <laughs> okay. There's mud. Any other comments for Joel? The staff? No. Nope. Staff's okay with six o'clock? Okay. Earlier the better. <laughs> Three thirty. Three thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for the comments. Okay. H. Committee appointments to bike and ped committee. Um, that would be Linda Monson, and the tree board is Mary Lemeron. And so, um, I'm making those appointments. So I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the committee appointments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Number 13, items for next agenda. Madam, Madam President, I have to answer for Tracy's question earlier. Okay. So the short answer is it's a water refund. Um, the Green Bay Water Utility notified us that there was a, a billing issue with the United Nation and it's a correction. So. The village really had nothing to do with that. It was uh, on their water system. And so they notified us it was two quarters of billing issues uh, that they were working with the Oneida Tribe on. And since we had already received the revenue on it, we issued the refund. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. If there's any items for the next agenda, give the office a call. We'll get them on. Okay, number 14, closed session items. During the meeting, the Village Board of the Village of Ashwabnan may convene into closed session pursuant to A, Wisconsin Statute Section 19.85, Parent 1, Parent E, to consider, discuss, act on deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of 
public funds or conducting other specified public business regarding tax parcel VA-41-4-E, 789 Armed Forces Drive, tax parcel VA-66-7-F, 830 Morris Avenue, tax parcel VA-132-13, for Marina Lane, VA-1405, 2450 Marina Circle, VA-1373, 480 Pilgrim Way. And regarding the TIP Developers Performance Agreement with Gen Cap, Dana Ashwabanen, 75 LLC for tax parcel VA-56-4-1, where competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. B, Wisconsin Statute Section 19.85, Parent 1, Parent G, to consider discuss act regarding the TIP Developers Performance Agreement with Gen Cap Dana Ashwabanen 75 LLC for tax parcel VA-56-4-1 and conferring with legal counsel concerning strategy to be adopted by the board with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved. The Village Board may thereafter reconvene into open session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute Section 19.85, Parent 2, to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. I need a motion to go into closed session. So I move. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into closed session. Roll call, please. President Kodoski? Yes. Trustee Paul? Yes. Trustee Zerbel? Yes. Trustee Service? Yes. Trustee Krieger? Yes. And Trustee Fluky? Yes. Okay, we are going to go into closed session now. This conference is no longer being recorded.